Welcome to the topic of VTK Deep Visualization Toolkit. This is part one of a two-part series. I'm going to give you an overview of the VTK library, and also I will talk about VTK's graphics models in this video. What is VTK? So VTK is an open source, freely available software system for 3D visualization, and also it can be used for graphics rendering, image processing, etc. VTK has been used by many different applications. You can read data of many different file formats. And also in VTK, you're going to find out many different algorithms for visualization and image processing. Internally, VTK is implemented in C++, so it has a very good object-oriented design. It also has many different interpreted languages as wrappers. That means you can write Python, Tico TK, or Java if you want to control the construction of visualization pipeline using VTK. So let's look at VTK's system architecture. Internally, VTK is entirely written by C++ as the core. If you only have a binary installation, that is, you are not going to develop VTK, you're only going to use it to build your own application, you are going to find out VTK core has libraries, that is, DLL or .a, .so object in your computer, and also the headers, the include files. But if you're going to have a source code installation, that is, you might want to extend VTK in the future, you're going to have to download all the source code that implements the VTK library. On top of the C++ core of VTK, there are interpret language wrapper. The languages that are supported right now include TCL, Java, and Python. So in order for you to use VTK and the wrappers, you need to have installed Tico TK shell, you need to install Java, and or you need to have a Python interpreter. But the wrappers are included in the VTK installation package. If you're going to extend VTK wrapper, you need to have a Tico TK source, you need to have a Java SDK, or you need to also have Python source. Like I said earlier, EVDK implements many different algorithms. It has hundreds of C++ classes. If you want to get a detailed description of VTK, you can go to the website at the bottom of this page to get some detail. So now let's look at VTK object models. Uh, because VTK is written in C++, so it has lots of objects. Basically, the objects in VTK can be divided into two different models, the graphics models and the visualization models. Or you can say VTK objects are either graphics objects or graphics processing objects or visualization processing objects. So the graphics objects are responsible for rendering, that is to generate the final images. The visualization objects are responsible for generating graphical objects to represent the data. So VTK uses a data flow system that executes a visualization pipeline. You always start from the source of the data, that is the data you want to visualize. Then the data are going to be sent through visualization objects for transformations. And the output of visualization objects are geometries, something that can be rendered. The graphics objects are going to take the geometry and produce the final image out of it. Now let's look at VTK pipeline in more detail. Typically, the pipeline will start from a data source, which is part of the visualization model. The data are going to be sent through one or multiple filters. The filters are to transform the data into geometries or other displayable formats. Then the output of filters are going to be sent to the VTK graphics model. So in between the visualization model and the graphics model, there's something called mapper. Mapper is to convert the output of filters to something that can be displayed. We take the output of mapper to create something we call actors. The actors are graphical objects. You can imagine they can be a bunch of triangles, 
that can be colors or other related properties. And then the renderer, the renderer is responsible for displaying the actors to the final display window. So data uh, flow from left to right, and the update direction is from right to left. What does that mean? That means, say, when you want to re-display the image from a different view angle, or you want to display a different part of data, then the request is going to be sent from right to left. For example, we need to request new data, and uh, the algorithm needs to be run again to convert the data to new geometry, etc. Today, I'm going to focus on the VTK graphics model. That is, we assume the data has been transformed into something like geometry, and uh, let's look at the structure of VTK program. How do you display the geometry? So now let's look at the first object in the graphics model, that is the mapper. So what is mapper? So mapper is an object that it is responsible for converting data into graphical primitives. It can also be used to write the output to a file, but sometimes we call this writers as opposed to mappers. A mapper requires one or multiple input data objects. The mapper sits in the middle of the visualization model and the graphics model. So you can think of mappers are to terminate the visualization pipeline. So one example of mapper in VTK is the VTK poly data mapper. So you can imagine that a cylinder is being produced by a filter, which can take any arbitrary representation. Now the job of VTK poly data mapper is to map the cylinder in this example into renderable geometry. For example, a collection of triangles. The next object to look at in the graphics model is the VTK actors. So what are actors? Actors are graphical data or objects. It will contain the object properties, for example, the color, the shading type, etc. Also, it contains geometry, say, a collection of triangles. Also, because the graphical objects can be displayed anywhere in the three-dimensional space, you can animate it, you can change the size, so the actor also contains the transformations required to place the object in the final position. Actors doesn't contain light. For example, in VDK, there's a class called VDK light. It also doesn't contain camera. They are placed outside of this actor. So actor is really just a representation of the object being rendered. The lights, the cameras are required to produce the final picture. Actor needs to work together with lights and cameras, and the scene which contains lights, camera, and the actors is then rendered to an image by an object called renderer. Now let's look at the next object, VTK renderer. This is the last object in the graphics model or the pipeline. So now we have VTK actors, which represent the graphical objects. We also have lights and cameras. VTK renderer is going to take all those input to coordinate the rendering process and produce the final images. So when you construct a graphical scene in VTK, if you do not provide your own lights and camera, VTK renderer is going to create a default one for you. But you do need to have a VTK actor that is, at least you need to have something to render. The output of VTK renderer is sent to a VTK render window. The window is just the window you usually see on your screen used to display the graphics image. The VTK render window is a class that ties the entire rendering process together. It manages all the platform-dependent window management issues you know, X window, Microsoft Windows, or Mac Windows, they all require specific way to create a window and create a drawable area. VTK render window hides all those details for you. So you do not need to consider platform-dependent details. 
Inside the VTK render window, it stores graphical specific information such as window size, position, title, frame buffer depth, which can be set by you through VTK APIs. So basically, you can imagine the VTK renderer internally is being implemented using graphics libraries such as OpenGL. And then in the VTK render window implements platform specific detail to manage the windows. Now let's use a cartoon to put everything together. So assuming you are the viewer, what is the conceptual model for VTK graphics? So you need a camera, you need lights to illuminate the scene, and of course you need the actor. The camera in VTK is called VTK camera, which is an object. The actor has the property using the class VTK property has mappers. Remember mapper is to convert data into renderable objects. Then you have VTK transform to transform the object. For the light, we have VTK light class. And all together are put under the VTK renderer. Remember, VTK renderer is to coordinate the entire rendering process. VTK renderer is going to send the result, that is to draw on VTK render window. And the purpose of the graphics model, so you can realize now, is to render the geometry or volumetric data on the screen. Notice I put here a VTK render window interactor. This is an object that allow you to manipulate your graphics scene. Okay, so now let's look at how can we apply the concept to write a VTK program. So remember VTK is a library. In order to display geometry or visualize your data, you need to write programs in C++. Or you can use VTK wrappers so such as Python or TKOTK or Java. Here, let's just focus on say, a C++ program. Now, so this is a pseudocode of the program that follows the visualization pipeline I just described. First of all, you need to create geometry. The geometry can be uh, created from earlier visualization pipeline, or VTK actually allows you to create some procedural geometry. Then remember, mapper is to convert geometry into renderable objects such as set of triangles. So you create a mapper and then you provide the geometry as input and give that to the mapper. And remember in the graphics model you need actor that includes the mapper and the property and the transformations. So I need to write code to create an actor. Then I provide the mapper as input to the actor. Actor, lights, camera are used to set up your renderer. So we need to create a renderer. And you give the actor to the renderer. Renderer is to perform the actual rendering and display the output to a window. So we need to create a window and provide the renderer to the window. Finally, I say render then the image is going to display. So this is the pseudocode. And uh, when you write a C++ program, or even using other scripting language, you'll follow this order. So you need to have a concept of visualization pipeline. Now let's look at the real C++ program. I'm following exact same steps in my pseudocode earlier. Um, I'm not going to explain the individual function methods in detail but they are pretty much self-explained. In this example, I use a VTK cone source to create a geometry of cone. And this geometry is being output to a mapper. So I create a VTK poly data mapper. And the input, I use the method set input to connect the cone. I use cone get output to the mapper. The set input and get output are used to connect different objects. So you need to make sure that they are compatible. After I have a mapper, I'm going to create an actor. 
remember under the actor you have mapper and you have a default license camera if you don't specify your own so first of all I create a VDK actor and then I give mapper to the actor the actor is provided to a VTK renderer. Here I create an object and I add actor, this cone actor, to the renderer. Finally, I create a window. I add renderer to the window and I call render. When this is done, if you run this program, you are going to show the graphics in the VTK output window. The window itself is a VTK render window object and this image is being displayed by VTK renderer. A VTK renderer contains VTK camera, VTK light, and VTK actor. VTK actor has property, has geometry, represented as a mapper, and transformations. Okay, so this is the end of my lecture on graphics model of VTK. I'm hoping that you have a basic concept now so that you can write your first VTK program.